Ricky, it's three straight winning seasons, something that had never been done at Southside. In fact, I think you have almost as many winning seasons in six years as they had had in 60 plus years. What has worked with you that hasn't worked with the other coaches that had been there before you? Well, it's, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, I, my my guesstimation is, you know, we brought in a really good plan, uh, a very good off-season plan, a very good uh, scheme plan for football and and uh, for our athletic program in general. And uh, we were very fortunate our first year, and we had a little running back named Matthew Collier that rushed for 1,800 yards three years in a row and kind of made us relevant. And, uh, and we've had some good players since. But uh, I think that's – that's uh, that's uh, and the, you know Nick and our kids play hard so uh, put those two together and I think that goes for a good formula. You've been a winner everywhere. I think you were at Gonzalez right before they had won. I think they went to the quarters that year, nine and five, the year before he took over. Then you get to a program like Southside, who again had had next to no success in the previous six years. What drew you to that job where you knew winning was going to be pretty was going to be a bigger challenge? Well, at the time, the uh, superintendent of schools was Ricardo Vela, and and he had a big vision uh, for that for our school district, you know, and, and sold me on it. And uh, I came, and uh, you know, he he, stayed, he was there a year, and then he, he was left. And uh, but I think he was the big biggest reason that I came, and him and several other people uh, really wanted to make an effort and turn that turn that program around, and uh, and uh, put put a lot of. Uh, you know, money in it and put a lot of effort in it, and and uh, I uh, I think that he's the reason that he drew me to that to that job. What did you have to do just to get them competitive? Because it, it worked right away. They won eight games your first year, and they had never ever done that in 62 years. Well, you know, we had an outstanding senior class. You know, I know they were one and nine the year before we got there, but that class that were going to be seniors when we came in that we inherited. They were really hungry and they wanted to win and wanted to do everything that we had them do. They ate it up, you know. They bought, really got. I know that cliche buying into, it, but he, they really, you know, uh, sold out for us and, and uh, got got us over the top, you know, that year especially. The last three years, you guys have had winning seasons. Finally, won your first playoff game in '18. Had a loss to Pioneers past year, who Pioneers should have been in the state quarterfinals. How have you been able to get these guys, I don't want to say motivate because it's easy to motivate them, but how do you get them to believe where, for a lot of those guys, if their parents had played at Southside before, winning eight games in a year was a pipe dream? Well, you know, uh, sporadically, Southside's had a little success. You know, I think 92, they won a district title, and again, playoffs in 2000, uh, you know, 2009. Uh, so I think you know they they've had some success there in, in very limited spurts, but I think that uh, the kids see that uh, you know the things that can ha can happen when you uh, when you are successful, uh, all district selections, all area selections, all state selections, and I, I think that goes a long way with uh, with uh, you know buying into our program and seeing all the success. We finally got people going to college and playing college ball. And, Right now, we have two kids that have been offered D1 scholarships already. So I think that's, uh, you know, uh, I think the, there's a big upside to our program, and I think that uh, that we're on the rise. A lot of coaches will come in, take a program that's already had success, and they kind of keep it. They, their their plan is to try to keep it going and not be the one that lets it fall off. But for you. Being able to build this up with, with what you've had, I mean, is it kind of fun because you're leaving your mark on the program where people are going to remember you for 50 years down the road just because of where they were at before you got here and where they're at now? Yes, it is, but it, I'm going to tell you what, it's a lot of work. I mean, you come in and uh, there's a lot of work to be done, and uh, I, I have an outstanding coaching staff. I mean, I, I have a tremendous defense coordinator. Uh, Chuck Vince was at Lamarck. In the heyday, and Marlin in the heyday, he does a great job, and uh, Larry Withridge and Tatum. I could go on a Montoya. I could go on and on. I got a great coach staff, and they've been with me a few years, and and uh, you know, and we have high expectations as a staff. So, uh, you know, our goal is to play for the state. Uh, for the we want to play for the state title eventually. You know, that would be great. But we want to play for the district title every year and have a chance at the district title every year. That's that's our goal.
And you've been in a tough district the last couple of years being in with a coastal bend. It's going to change a little bit with uh, Cal Allen dropping out of 5A and shuffling moving around. What do you, what's the philosophy going to be or the mindset in 2020 knowing that 5A ball is beginning to change with uh, how teams are dropping down from 6A and now in the, in throughout the 2020s, 5A is going to look a lot different in five years than it does now. Well, you're absolutely right. The, uh, it's changed the, uh, you know, the setting of, of 4A and 5A around or in the South Texas for sure with Kay Allen and uh, Alice and Gregory Portland and well Gregory Portland stayed five but, but Portland Vaca Calhoun and Corpus Christi Miller all moving down to 4A and and that, that's really uh, you know it changes you know the landscape for 5A football around here and uh, you know and we're going into this, uh, to a district we're familiar with three teams in the district but you know we know we haven't played legacy or well, nobody has or two years old but Southwest or our real Grand City, we, we've never played those teams and don't know much about them. So it's all new for us. I'll get you out of here on this one. The South Side doesn't get as much coverage as the North Side because I know there hasn't been a lot of teams that have had success in recent years, but we've seen what South Side has done. We saw Poteet go from 0 and 10 to 3 and 7. We're seeing the South Side beginning to finally pick up. I mean, what's what what's the philosophy or the atmosphere down there where we're starting to see the South Side finally beginning to compete with the North Side? Well, I think there's some good programs down on the south side. You know, Sonny Detmer's done a good job for years at Somerset. And, you know, uh, Hardendale, you know, that, that district does a good job. And uh, East Central was a lot better than they've been last year. And, uh, you know, Southwest and, uh, and uh, went 6-6, six and six and they went two rounds deep. And heck, you know, Legacy went 6-4 and four and only their second year as a program. So uh, there's a lot of good things happening on the south side. And there are some good coaches and some good players. And, it's starting to starting to show in in uh, in, in the area code of two ten, so we're excited about it.